G'day guys, Source 20 here. I hope you are all doing well. I am feeling pretty pumped. I've just started a new city, a new series, and I've got that new city, that new series enthusiasm where I've got all these great ideas that I just can't wait to start building. But then, you know, it is also very daunting looking at that blank map and trying to figure out how this is going to start to take shape. And then not to mention, if you are on PC and have the Steam Workshop, you just have thousands and thousands of mods and assets to choose from, which can be extremely daunting. So today, I'm going to be talking about the mods and assets I have chosen for my new series, Mile Bay, how I plan to use them, why I have chosen them. This won't be so much of a tutorial on how to use those mods. There's plenty of great tutorials on YouTube already for that. This is more how I plan to use them, and if you are interested in creating a similar game experience or making the game look like mine does, this will be a tutorial for you. At the time of recording this tutorial, I'm using around 60 mods and assets. They are split into three categories, visual mods, gameplay mods, and assets. You can find links to those collections in the description below. I recommend making your own collection and then subscribing to the mods and assets from these collections that you would like to use in your own city. That way you can pick and choose the ones you want, the ones you don't want, and create a similar game experience if that's what you're after. I've also split this video into three timestamps. We're gonna start by looking at the visual mods, then we're gonna go to gameplay mods, and we'll finish with assets. So jumping into game, and let's have a look at some of my graphic settings. And we're gonna start with ultimate eye candy, and my relight settings, feel free to copy these down. I use these mods in every one of my cities. I personally like to create presets of each of my cities so that I can just load them in every time I change saves. And in terms of these settings, I use long shadows, so I drag it out this way. And then I also turn up the brightness quite a bit so that we've got some really nice contrast going on. And I think the long shadows just really add a lot in terms of LUTs, I use the Relight Neutral, which comes with a Relight mod. So I highly encourage using those ones because it gives some really nice colors pretty much in every setting. Next up, let's have a look at the map theme. I'm using Not So Rocky Hills map theme, but I'm also using the map theme mixer too for a pretty good reason. This is how the Not So Rocky map theme looks. It's really nice. I've only changed slight little things for um, my own purposes and my own reasons, but this is how it looks with not using Map Theme Mixer. Now, the reason why I've changed to Map Theme Mixer 2 is I want to get rid of the forest uh, color that was happening when I placed down trees. That's problematic when I make parks. It makes it really dark and I don't want that. And then the other reason is the field color. So if I use the field down here, you can see it's quite bright and that's fine, but I want to use the field for creating some farmlands. So that's not going to work for me. So I've chosen to use Map Theme Mixer and I've created my own mix. Load that in and there we go. You can see how I've made it so it's a slightly different color to the grass, it's a little bit browner. I can use that for some farmlands, like so. It's really subtle, but I, it's the sort of stuff that is really important for my cities when I try to build places of agriculture. And then you can see down here with the park, it's no longer that dark green, so I think that looks much better. Now let's have a look at the detailed settings. So I'm using ultimate level of detail, render it, and sharp textures. These mods are pretty self-explanatory. These are my general settings for ultimate level of detail. Sharp textures, I keep them quite high and sharp. And then again for the render it mod, I am using another preset so that I can always have that saved. And I use the anti-assailing technique as TAA. Now this is very important for me. So scrolling down to some of the trees, um, and if I was to set it to just default, you can see you get this flickering and that's been bothering me for such a long time in City Skylines is that flickering mostly happening on the trees. Let's find another good example of that. Yeah, you can see like so much flickering going on and that really bothers me. When you switch to TAA, that pretty much goes away. And then I just, these are my settings down here if you want to copy them. Next three very important mods, Daylight Classic, Clouds and Fog Toggler, and Cube Map Replacer. Very important mods, I'll show you how I use them. So these mods allow me to have realistic looking clouds within my game. The way I do that is you go to options, you make sure that for Daylight Classic, these are your settings. 
And then in Cube Map Replacer, my personal favorite is actually the one that comes with this mod and that's the example one piece. The reason why I like this one is I set it to minimal horizon, go to clouds and fog toggler and I just disable clouds. And I personally like this because it actually gives the illusion that the ocean continues to this horizon. You can't really achieve that when you use some of the other clouds. They uh, just look a little bit different. I personally think this is one of my favorites. These two mods allow me to fly around the map so freely. Cinematic Camera Extended mod allows me to take my cinematics. There's a great tutorial on how to use that. Tree movement control I think is really important. I personally think that the tree swaying like this looks quite unrealistic. So I go into the options and I completely turn that down. I stop distant trees. I don't know what that does. But the, tr the random tree rotation, also great when placing down trees. It'll mean that the tree will spin around. We won't get as much repetition when you're placing down trees. Definitely encourage getting that one. So that's it for the visual mods. Let's have a look at some of the gameplay mods. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use these mods. It's more just showing you how I'm going to use them. There's a bunch here and a lot of them already have their own tutorials on YouTube. So I highly encourage you to go and check them out rather than um, sitting through a one hour episode of this, watching me go through every single mod. But let's start with the top one which is making all this possible and that's extended game options mod. And that means that I can unlock milestones, it means that I can unlock achievements and tailor the game experience how I want it. This is the first time I'm using it, it means you can keep on playing through these milestones and achievements and use mods at the same time. All these mods here, these are either dependencies or they are mods that just improve your game performance. So just grab these, they're really great mods in general. 81 tiles, of course I'm using that. I like to use all the tiles within my maps. There's not enough space otherwise. Building things mod is awesome if you are zoning your cities. Handpicking the buildings that you want to spawn in each one of your areas is so powerful. I think this is something I'm going to be using a lot within this series because it means that I can make sure that my farming areas look like farming areas. I'm not going to get crazy random buildings that don't belong in farming districts that are going to spawn there. Also means that I can hide any ugly buildings that I don't like within the vanilla game. And it means you can just handpick what each area is going to look like. I've used it a lot within my other series and I'm planning to use it quite a lot within this one. I'm also going to be using control building level up mod and zoning adjuster in a similar way. I'm using zoning adjuster so that buildings don't grow on certain roads, in particular these residential areas. Most suburbs will have buildings grow on one road and not on these corners. So that's why I've chosen them to do that. And then control building level up mod means that I can actually make districts just grow to a certain level and that's a personal preference for me. I think that some of the buildings that reach this level are a little bit too advanced or just don't fit the theme. Down the track, I think that this area is going to be super nice, super posh houses and then I'm going to allow some of those buildings to level up to level 5. But for the time being, level 3 is just fine. Advanced vehicle options is something that I only really scratched the surface with, but it's something that I think is really important when you want to get rid of some vehicles and also add in some custom ones. There's some vehicles within the vanilla game that I don't really like, so I make sure that they don't spawn within my cities. There's also much better looking train assets on the Steam Workshop than the vanilla version, so I always sub out my train assets and I'm going to do the same for my cargo. And then when I do add some extra vehicles, I can just tailor them, make sure that they spawn and make sure that others don't. And I can just tailor my city so it looks a particular way. The next few mods, I've already done a bit of a tutorial on how to use them for the City Skylines uh, channel. I've added a card up in the top right corner if you want to see how to use them. Um, but I'm pretty much using them in the same way as I do in that tutorial. And then these four gameplay mods I think are really important. I could just grab them. I haven't changed any of their settings. I've just subscribed to them and I think my game runs in a more balanced way. I think connections work better. I think the industries work better. Just grab them. I think they're very much worthwhile. And then honestly, there's probably good enough tutorials on YouTube that go through how all these ones work. I'm going to skip past them. Um, the one that I do want to talk about is Railway Replacer because that's going to lead us to our next part, which is assets. 
So I'm going to use the railway replacer mods to replace all the vanilla train tracks. I think these look a ton better. The railway replacer mod actually replaces all of it for you. And it means that you can actually use a whole bunch of different networks instead of using um, the base game vanilla ones. It's pretty straightforward. All the information you need is in this area here. And there's also a bunch you can choose from. I think I'm just going to stick with the basic one at the moment. And I'll have a look at downloading some extra assets down the track. Ah, uh, get it? Down the track. And I'm pretty sure there's a new one coming out. So just keep an eye out for the next version of this mod. There's only a couple of dependencies. And that's the reason why I've only chosen this one for now. And I'll see how I go a little bit later on. But I'm going to be using these railroad stations by Bad Peanut. Which is something I've been wanting to do for ages. This is how they look, and they just look so much better. They give you so much more variety than the base game train station. And you can, using the Railway Replacer mod, replace the train track using this option down here so that you can instead use these tracks, which do look so much better. Also really like that they're within the same style, so we can actually have the same types of train stations throughout the city, just in different formats. They've also got a pretty similar style to the vanilla assets, which I think is also important. Sometimes you can grab something that looks really highly detailed from the Steam Workshop, but doesn't really match the game. So you have to download extra mods and assets and you kind of go down a bit of a spiral. Whereas these ones actually fit in pretty well with the base game. So I think that these will work really well within this series. There are a few dependencies to grab, so make sure you subscribe to them if you are using these ground stations. The next thing I want to talk about are my roads. I'm going to be adding a lot of roads, well not a lot, but I'm going to be adding extra roads to this collection as we go through this series. Um, basically subscribing to ones that are adding a fair bit to the game experience. For instance, zonable and more realistic looking country roads I think is really important. Higher density, smaller roads, also very essential. And the suburban streets, my personal favorites, I think are a must have. No road markings, pretty wide, very detailed. These are awesome roads. And keeping with the network theme, I'm gonna use some breakwater assets. These look pretty good. So I'm gonna be using them around the waterways. And then grab yourself a versatile concrete retaining wall. This is my personal favorite. It's been out for a while now, but it's still one of the best looking retaining walls. And then one utility pole. I mean, this one ha comes in two sizes. There's a larger one and a smaller version. I personally think this is one of my favorite ones. There's a bunch of different utility poles on the Steam Workshop, but I think this one's probably one of the best. And then some parking lots. These are very useful. These are sort of a bit more within the vanilla themes. That's why I've chosen them. This one is a collection of them. So this actually probably is all I really need, but I have subscribed to just a couple of extra just in case. These are gonna be really useful for fleshing out those commercial districts without having to do like super high detailed parking lots, which can get pretty tedious. These are just plop and forget about sort of things. And then probably like the craziest, silliest, lamest thing that I've subscribed to is this just four times four concrete brush. I mean, this has been out since the game was first released pretty much. And honestly, this thing just follows me in every single one of my cities because it's just so useful. I mean, it, you can't really achieve this very quick, easy effect using mods. I mean, you can use surface painter, but I think actually just placing down a square is just so useful and I use it with pretty much every single one of my cities. So just, just download it. It's one of those really great uh, assets that is a must have. And then the last thing I want to talk about are trees. Probably the most important thing for your city. This is something that I don't encourage you just to download from my collection. I would encourage you to think about what sort of a city you're going to create and what sort of environment it is, and then consider what sort of trees to use. These are the types of trees I'm using. I'm using Douglas firs as my native tree, as well as these shore pines and these lodgepole pine shrubs are great just for the undergrowth. And then for my suburbs and around the city, I'm using hazel trees and I'm using these palm trees too. And these filler bushes by Podelmo are awesome. And then my tree that I always subscribe to are these ultra low tri trees. And I'll talk about how I'm using them. So like I said, think about where your city is going to be based because that's going to influence the types of trees you choose. I've chosen two types of native trees, 
big Douglas firs around the foothills of the mountains and then shore pines around the other areas. And then everything else is what I'm considering some sort of introduced species or something that is pretty generic that I can place around the city. You're going to find more introduced species of plants and foliage around the city and then around these other areas are going to be more even natural types of trees that were there before the city was established. Trees are always down to personal preference and whatever you're building within your city but whatever you do I encourage you to also grab some low poly trees from Podelmo who does a really great job at creating pretty high detail looking trees but also not really something that's going to completely tank your city if you place lots of them. These are awesome. These I think are pretty good detailed, pretty well detailed and are pretty low within tries and even gives you the information up there within the picture. So consider getting these to flesh out your cities in the less detailed areas or even within the suburbs and then some other more higher detailed trees you know place them around your more higher detailed areas and the way you can have a much better frame rate within your city but anyway guys that's it for this video i hope it was useful in one way or another let me know if it was and if you want to see more videos like this then subscribe to the channel follow along with the journey as we develop up mild bay big shout out to the people supporting the channel on patreon jacob iverson get the god samuel lou michael christian nines mike breeden nick garn John Van Gert, Oliver Assis, and Christopher C. Penny. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.